Howdy folks, Justin here, and uh, I wanted to give a quick deck tech video for the latest version of the Stone Shard and Friends deck. This is a deck that, um, you know, is an evolution of the deck that I played uh, as soon as the Madhouse Collection came out. You know, when um, Stone Shard Orc was first revealed, it was a card that super, you know, really got me excited. Uh, it's an obvious, uh, you know, two for one. Give, gave a uh, tribe that didn't have a lot of ability to control the board some removal uh, in in the form of cards that wouldn't also slow their inertia, you know, their, their board development. And um, I decided to make it the most all-in version that I could. Um, and you'll see the uh, first couple of games that I played with the deck here in just a second. But I wanted to go over some of my card choices. Decklist is there on the left um, because I don't really... Um, I think most of these cards require an explanation. I'm just going to point out some of the highlights. Uh, obviously, some of the odd inclusions, perhaps, are coming at Marauder. I knew that this deck needed one drops, right? And that will explain a, a couple other cards, too, in it. It needed one drops because it was, like I said, in, the, the strategy is all in, right? And once I decided that I was going to run Relentless Raider, I knew I needed other things that, you know, synergize well with that quick start, which led me to Covenant Marauder. Uh, which in general rewards you for dumping out your hand on the board, playing every threat that you draw every turn. And uh, I thought that the next best thing, because I wanted to have a little bit more one-drop action in the deck, was Shadow Mirror. Uh, as you'll see in the, in the games, Shadow Mirror turned out to be pretty good. Um, I mean, maybe. It does damage and it's got charge. Uh, y you know... It's sort of a sort of a fun a fun of you know a pick card I just picked because I thought it was enjoyable, but I think that Shadow Mirror is a pretty good card. I think that in the event that Shadow Mirror dies on turn two and uh, you're you know sort of trying to just push those last points of damage against a deck that's sort of taking its time winning, I think Shadow Mirror along with uh, Wood Orc Headhunter and um, uh, Soul of Revenge and Battle Rage Orc all, all represent um, reach that is pretty unique to this tribe, perhaps, as far as uh, just the sheer number of charge creatures or direct damage creatures that you're going to find outside of blue. Where, of course, you got Lightning Bolt and Supreme Atromancer. Um, we got a one of Northwind Outpost. Uh, the bottom line is that I came up with 59 car 49 cards I really wanted to run, and um, it was either this or a uh, Steel Scimitar, which is a card that did not make the list. This is uh, That's this card right here. Um, Steel Scimitar is obviously a good card, but in the end, I just I thought that it was more likely that I, because of all the charge creatures I was running, I was going to get more value from North of an Outpost than a, st a single Steel Scimitar. I tried to keep the number of orcs I was running to an incredibly high number, um, you know, both for Banker Eye Butcher, Militant Chieftain, uh, Stone Shard Orc value, and also because I thought um, it would be fun to see, you know, a deck with a whole bunch of Orcs in it go off. Uh, uh, you know, consequently, the only creatures we're running that aren't Orcs are Earthmoan Spinner, which is just an incredible tempo card. I think that um, you can make the argument that Haunting Spirit... I'm sorry, not Haunting Spirit. The uh, four drop with Silence in uh, purple, Cursed Specter. You could certainly make an argument that Cursed Specter uh, might be more useful because it's got Prophecy, but uh, we're not really going for any sort of Prophecy um, you know, value here in this deck. We're really just trying to play a straightforward aggro game. And um, additionally, when we decided to run Mighty Ally, obviously running a whole bunch of uh, red cards just made more sense, Dragon Tail Savior and Shadow Mirror being the only cards that don't benefit from Northern Outpost and don't trigger Mighty Ally. Something to keep in mind, you know, uh, when you're playing, especially cons you know when you consider Shadow Mirror might be on top of your deck, that might affect uh, your next, you know, that turns play or something like that. Rabbit Shot's the only card in the deck besides Northern Outpost. Then that's not a creature. Rabbit Shot's just something to do with one extra Magicka cycle cards, grab more charge creatures, etc., etc. Uh, yeah, so our Revenge, powerful card, straightforward. Toby, uh, Militant Chieftain, obviously one of the few ways you have to generate any sort of like actual value in this deck. Um, usually just going to give your creatures plus one, plus one. And uh, Gortwog, the unique legendary to these two colors, uh, too slow. Uh, flex options, if you don't have Sorrows of Revenge, but you have Blood 
uh, dragons for some reason. Somehow that happened to you. Uh, Blood Dragon as in the Sora spot isn't terrible, but I think Sora is actually better for this deck. You can use it both to keep uh, your opponent from making trades into your smaller creature, more vulnerable creatures, and um, you know it's almost a guaranteed five point life swing, which is huge. So that's it. That's the deck. I hope you have fun watching these games. Uh, they're certainly fast. <laughs> Howdy folks, Bye -bye. Justin here, and um, it's been a long time since we played an orc deck list on camera, so we have sleeved up here some orcs, along with our new friend Shadow Mirror, uh, and we're just going for a very straightforward aggro deck, I just thought it might be fun to give something like this a shot, and uh, see how it performs. So our first game with the list, first time i played orcs in months actually, is against Dust103, notably absent of course, Gortwog, our fearless leader. Playing against another warrior deck, and we have a bunch of one drops. Seems great. So, what is the play? I think the play is. Well, the play is we hope we draw a one or a two, Greetings. so we can empty our hand to turn two. Greetings. We did. So. Nothing will hold I have back. No now we're just praying that he doesn't have Skaven Pyromancer. I guess we can't really empty our hand, but we can get close. We stand united. Okay, you got it. Um, I have no fear of the power this the seems pretty good. Shadowmere doing work. <laughs> so this is obviously like incredibly all in, right? But see how it works. So Skaven Pyromancer is the this would be one of the biggest blowouts I have ever been hit with in my life. Didn't have it. Okay. Um, again, unfortunately can't play both cards. Let's just go ahead and swing. Ooh, and we get a prophecy. That makes sense. Hopefully it's a 4-1. And not a 1-4 guard. It's cast out. Sure. Um, so if I play both of these next turn... Play both of these this turn... Eh, I'd rather do this. Get some more damage in. Okay, opponent's at 14. Uh, unfortunately, they have 6 cards in their hand. And we have no strategy. We have Midnight Sweep, so this is just a Prophecy deck. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> That's a great draw. That is a great draw. You get one shot. Make it good. This should be good. Awesome. Again, Skaven Pyromancer would be the biggest blowout in history. But we do have lethal on board. <laughs> Close ranks, let nothing okay. through. We stand united. Okay. Oh well, yeah, give me, give me some cards. I mean, bad for this. Woodark Headhunter might have just sealed the deal though. Um Yeah. Let's rock and roll. And we did it. Orc smash. So that was from uh, introduction, queuing, and whatever else. I meant to say a good game, sorry. That was three minutes. Three minutes to play the orc deck. Um, let's give it one more shot. Man, it is emotionally draining to an extent to play aggro decks. That's I mean, how I feel anyway, right? To have, not have answers in your hand, to just be relying on the top of your deck constantly, it's hard. I gotta give those guys credit for uh, pushing through that pain. So we're playing against Don Ilya, the Night Mother's Keeper. My old job. Rank 13 legend, and uh, they are packing warrior as well. This hand looks okay. Um, what do I want to do here? 
Band together, orcs. I like playing that first. No play. Close ranks. Let nothing through. Taste of my power. Next turn, we play both of these, and I think we can break two runes. I think that's the most damage. And then turn four, we Close play the ranks. butcher. Let nothing through. That is ambitious, my friend. That is super ambitious. Does this represent more damage? No. I'm ready for anything. I have no fear of the power of the Honor and blood. Taste my power. Okay. Seems pretty good. Um, I don't know what solves this problem for him. Uh, north and outpost Honor represents and four more damage. This day will be mine. No longer the odds. The right, so I think, barring, you know, good prophecies, I think he's dead. Uh, we play this first. Um. Honor and blood, taste of my power. That's game. Trolls take you by the end. Turn four. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I guess the question is, is this the sort of content you want to see more of on this channel? Um, if so, let me know. You know, I I like to play a specific kind of deck, specific kind of mid-range, grindy, board control type deck. I definitely do understand the appeal of stuff like this. Uh, obviously, I like orcs in general as a species because I dress up like them when play games sometimes. But anyhow, I'm going to cut the video off here because uh try to keep it to two or three games, and that was two very satisfying games. So uh, that, I'm doing this a little bit for me. I hope you're all having a good day. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.